Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm very excited to show you this game from the War of the Ring 2023 World Tournament. We are in the round of 32. There are 32 players left. It is a best of three match. We will play once as free people, once as shadow, and then if it's still tied, we'll play a tiebreaker game. And my opponent this round is Julianis. I am free people, they are shadow. Let's jump in. They allocated zero eyes and rolled four. They have rolled four eyes on turn one, and they only got a single muster, and then I got this roll, which lets me crown Aragorn turn one if I'm willing to give them a ring. So I think I'm going to do it. It does seem fun. And because... hmm. Interesting. If I do it, they will get an extra. They might be able to get Sauron or Saruman this round, even though they're taking the last. Even though I'm taking the last action, I have to use the ring on my second to last action. So, is it worth it to give them Saruman? Turn one, and a ring. What would you do? I think I'm going to do it. I, it's been a really long time since I played this game, so I don't actually remember, but I think I'm going to do it. All right, so I, I separate I separate Strider, Legolas, Gimli, and Boromir. <laughs> this may be a long game. <laughs> I'm going to try and speed up. All right, so they move units from Baradur to Gorgoroth. I move companions around. Gimli goes to North Anduin Vale, heading up to Erebor. Legolas is in Lorien, and Strider and Boromir head to Eastumnet. They muster Isengard Tor, which is certainly correct, because if I don't have Fearfire Foes or something like that, which it looks like I don't, then they get to uh, they get they get Sarma on this round. All right, so I move companions. Gimli is now in Old Forest Road. And they get Saruman turn one, thanks to my gift of a ring, but I get Aragorn turn one. So there we go. On to round two. Let's see. They are going to allocate zero eyes again, and now they roll two. And at this point, I am happy to move the Fellowship quickly and try and kill off Gandalf. That's generally what I'm going to do. And then I'll slow down after Gandalf is dead. And the, and the sort of the balancing factor of giving them Saruman turn one is that now I could get Gandalf turn two. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But I didn't roll a Will of the West. All right, I start off by playing King Brand's Men. Obviously, that's a nice strategy card to play. And I get to draw an extra one with Gandalf. Through a day and night, Riders of Theoden. Happy to see those. Let's see, Sauron gets mustered toward war. What cards do they have? Wow, they have some nice cards. New Powers Rising is certainly good. Ring Wraiths are broad is flexible. Pits of Mordor is nice if I'm going military. That's a good, very good reinforcement card. All right, so they move armies. They have gathered up in Gorgoroth and Far Harad to Near Harad, so it looks like they're going to focus on Gondor. I move the Fellowship. Two sixes get hit, and there's a one. So at this point, do I lose Gandalf, do I take a random or just lose one corruption? I think I take a random because maybe I get a hobbit and I'll be okay with that. And then I can move again and still kill off Gandalf. I can also, because I have Boromir in Minas Tirith and I have Legolas in Lorien, I can use these character results to muster. And I do want to get Gondor to war in advance of the Mordor army coming. It will facilitate the Witch King, so we'll see. All right, so I take a random, and it's a Hobbit. That makes sense. Who is it? It's Pippin. Okay, so Pippin ends up in South Downs. And then if in the future I draw Fear Fire Foes, I will be able to bring Pippin to Bree and get the North straight to war. New Powers Rising. Certainly nice early game for Shadow. I move the Fellowship again. Miss this time. And now armies are continuing to merge in Mordor and also North Dunland to Moria to be prepared to take out Lorien. All right, I play Riders of Theoden here. Hmm, okay. 
I guess I want to be prepared to use this army muster efficiently as an army movement. And if I get these units in Edoras first and then move them, it will be better. And I guess I'm thinking they're not going to attack immediately into Fords of Eisen. Maybe they will. But it, if they get Rohan too much to war early on, it can really cause trouble for them. So play Riders of Theoden. They don't attack into Fords of Eisen right away, which is nice. And now I have... Okay, that's interesting. So I had time to use that army muster to move into Westamnet. But instead, I mustered the north one towards war. I'm really quite confused by that. I guess I just think to myself, I want the north to war, and any die can get the elves towards war, and any die can get Gondor towards war, so why bother? Um, and maybe I don't want to facilitate the Witch King next turn, because it looks like they're attacking Lorien anyway, so let them waste their time attacking it. All right. They move armies around. They have now merged up in Dimraldale, and they have three in the Gap of Rohan. So if Gandalf does show up, they will be able to attack out of Orthanc and still leave some defense behind for Ents. I get Athalos and Power of Tom Bombadil. Athalos, normally, in a normal game with a ring strategy, you almost certainly play this for corruption, but if you're going a military game, it's possible you'll use Anduril and get two automatic hits. Quite good, but obviously pretty high cost to corruption for the fellowship so we'll see how the game develops i did manage to move twice so that's something i want to i certainly want to roll a will of the west they allocate an eye roll one and i do not get another will of the west so i, I want to be killing off gandalf but the upside of him being in the fellowship is that i can at least play cards though looking at this amazingly i don't i, I only have power of tom bombadil as a playable card horn of gondor there and back again i don't want to bother playing help and look for through day and night so very few of these actually playable right now as playable cards but i guess i'll play power of tom bombadil and cycle a strategy card they have enough army movement and then can put somebody to war and then get the witch king this turn and with their cards they also have uh ring wraiths are abroad for an extra attack if they need it and more of a wound to mess with me if they want all right, so I start by playing Power of Tom Bombadil because I want to cycle into my strategy card sooner rather than later and see what I get. I would be very happy to see um, Power Too Great or Caliborn's Galadrim. There are quite a few strategy cards, well, at least those two, that I'd be happy to see. Also probably happy to see Aomer, um, probably happy to see Sc uh, Red Arrow. So quite a few cards that I can be drawing into. Fear Fire Foes. All right. So why did I bother mustering the north last turn? Yeah, okay. I didn't know that I was going to draw Fear Fire Foes. It still was a little weird, though. I could have done... I could have moved armies. All right. Um, so, oh, right. And I just drew Fear Fire Foes after playing Power of Tom Bombadil. So, okay. Not the most useful. All right. They... Attack into Fords of Eisen now. Yeah. So I guess my thinking was I'm going to try and have Helm's Deep hold out a little bit. Maybe these units from Fords of Eisen can survive. I also wanted to cycle into Scouts so that these guys could retreat into Helm's Deep. And then if they let me, if, if, I'm, if I give up Helm's Deep, but in exchange I get to activate and muster in Rohan a bunch, that's perhaps an okay trade. So we'll see. I don't play a card because how useful is shield wall? I don't know. I guess I'm saving Fear Fire Foes to play it. They get two hits, which is really nice for them, and I get one back. So they got rid of that leader. They play on on, they went, and I'm going to move the fellowship. They hit me and get a three. All right, so Gandalf goes goodbye. You know, I on one hand, I like him being in the fellowship to cycle more strategy cards, but on the other hand, I do eventually want to roll a Will of the West. So they move armies, Minas Morgul, into North Athelion, and then their Southrons and Easterlings into Umbar, though notably the Corsairs have not arrived yet, and the Southrons and Easterlings are not even at war. But they are hoping to someday do that. All right. I use a character die to move into Westamnet, because now that Gandalf is dead, 
I met three movement. I'm not in any particular rush to move the fellowship more than once a turn. I basically want to move them once a turn, so I only get hit on sixes, and Shadow has to keep allocating eyes. And then depending on how the military game progresses, either I'll you know, switch to military if they roll a bunch of eyes and have a very bad turn, a bad roll, or I'll just continue making slow progress with the fellowship and really defend my stronghold as well as I can. So I've now, I'm now threatening to, you know, move into Helm's Deep and shore up those defenses. Alternately, yeah, I don't know. Like, why don't they just attack into Westamnet? They're, they're pretty sure I don't have scouts. So I think this is a bit of a risky play. They can, I think they have a pretty good read that I don't have scouts. Also, I'm facilitating the Witch King. So if they attack into Westamnet right now, then they can get the Witch King because they'll put Rohan all the way to war. All right, but I guess I'll get to muster in Helm's Deep. They attack Helm's Deep first uh, because they have Ringwraiths are abroad. Okay, so that's nice. So Rohan is not at war yet. I'm thinking what to do. I play Fearfire Foes because I want to start mustering the north. The thing is, they would have attacked Rohan, and now Rohan is not going to be at war. A little, a little sad. All right, Fearfire Foes. I get, holy cow, I'm bringing Aragorn and Boromir to Westamnet because I'm thinking that this Helm's Deep army can't kill them in a single hit. It's a little risky. Oh, I have Brave Stand. Okay, fine. So I'm, I'm moving companions, Fear Fire Foes. I bring Aragorn and Boromir to Westamnet. It also gets me out of the potential death trap of Minas Tirith. So... It's a little sad because now I can't use Boromir's ability to muster Gondor towards war, but maybe that's okay. All right, so Gimli has moved to Dale. Wow, I really moved a lot of companions around with that. So Gimli got to Dale. Um, Pippin, Pippin got to Bree and said, hey, North, you should be at war now. Okay, the Witch King shows up. And I now muster Rohan to war the hard way. And what's interesting about this is I didn't know that they had Ringwraiths or Abroad. So I just gave them the Witch King, assuming that they did not have an attack. Wow. Okay. They play Ringwraiths. They have already have the Witch King in play. They're going to take out Helm's Deep. They cycle Morgul Wound. And one of the things about playing a, mil a heavy military game is that Shadow will often start playing their character cards, which is appropriate. But sometimes you can end up, they end up playing a lot of character cards and you can end up still destroying the ring with a fellowship. So we'll see. All right, they get no hits, and I get none, but they press, and then they get one hit. All right, so fair enough. There's no way that single regular was surviving in Helm's Deep. But imagine I had scouts, and there were three in there. That would have been pretty different. Okay, I get Cairdon's ships, and we prove the Swifter. I really would like to roll a Will of the West. What do I discard? I like Brave Stand. Maybe I get rid of... Mighty Attack, I don't know, or Daring Defiance. I think Horn of Gondor probably goes. No, I get rid of We Prove the Swifter. Okay. I want to have more attacking cards, and I don't really need to move my companions around super fast. All right, they allocate an eye and roll two more, and I still don't have a Will of the West, and I whine about Gandalf. All right. Um, so I start mustering in Rohan. Yeah, of course. They move armies into Orthanc and then into the Dead Marshes. So I guess they're coming to circle around Minas Tirith. I don't know. I think I'm just mustering up in Rohan like crazy. Yeah, so I have the North to war and Rohan to war. So I was actually probably pretty happy to roll those three musters. And... <laughs> oh, we just talked about that. They said, no Gandalf, but more musters for you than I wanted. And I said, I'd trade musters for Gandalf. 
All right, so they're coming around and taking out Druid and Forest. I muster again in Westamnet. I'm just going crazy with this army in Westamnet. That's an 11 hit point army with four leadership and two companions. Uh, that can do some damage. That can definitely do some damage. So where am I going to go with it? I also have through a Dana Knight. So I can like teleport to, not teleport, but go through a day and a night to Western Brownlands and then besiege Dol Guldur. So we'll see how they spend their army movements. I, I think I'm just baiting them to, all right, fine, go ahead, attack in Minas Tirith. All right, they draw Half Orcs and Goblin Men. That's usually a good card. They play Half Orcs and Goblin Men with the Witch King. Okay. I move the fellowship. So I guess I'm thinking it's not quite time. They still have they still have two army movements. So it's very tricky to know if you're going a military game, how soon do you try and strike? I probably could get one stronghold, but I really need two strongholds at the same time. And also ideally I want to wait for the shadow armies to be depleted a little bit more, spread a little more thin, and more of my forces are mustered up. So I do not typically like to just sit in a settlement here, but I, it was nice to get to muster that much. And the Witch King seems a little scared to attack out because if he does, then I can potentially retake Helm's Deep. So I'm going to continue to make slow progress with the Fellowship. All right, they hit me again and they draw three. Obviously not what I want to see, but that's how it goes sometimes. I get five movement with Mary. Let's see where Mary goes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, Mary's in Carrick. Eventually can meet up somewhere. My opponent notes that Gandalf is the only member of the Fellowship missing from the from the battlefield. That's pretty cool. All right, so they attack Westamnet from the Witch King. So I need to play a card. I play Keratin Ships because I get a full extra attack out of it. And I don't have the elves to war yet. And if I do get the elves to war, I probably want to be mustering in elven strongholds and let Gondor fend for itself. Also, with Rohan active, it's hard for, I think, Gondor to be completely subjugated this fast. So we'll see what happens. All right, Cureton ships. Here we go. I get one hit. Below average, but not zero hits. And then... They get no, they get two hits against me. Okay. And I get no hits against them. All right. So that was quite a bit below expectation on 10 dice on hitting on fives. We'd expect 10 thirds because you expect one third of a hit for each roll when you're hitting on five or six. So I would expect about three and a third hits and I got one. Yeah. A little disappointing. And they got also, to be fair, a little below average because they were hitting me on threes. Uh, I mean, on, on fives also. All right, so the, he's thinking about pressing, or they, they're they thinking about pressing. They press, and I'm going to retreat, I'm sure. I retreat to Edoras. Okay. So I'm now in a slightly dangerous position where they could sort of capture um, Edoras by entirely, um, basically just entirely taking it over if they go to fold. So we'll see what my plan is. I play Athalos here as the card effect. Interesting. So I guess I'm saying I, I want to signal to Shadow, hey, I'm still keeping the fellowship going. And I am potentially wasting an extra healing because I'm at two corruption. The chances of me rolling three fives or sixes is pretty low. And I had a full hand. I was going to have too many cards. So yeah, I had the option of going somewhere else with this army. I'm a little surprised that I'm letting myself get trapped in, but I guess we'll see. All right. So shadow army moves to fold. And then interesting. So they've completely, they've completely powered up in fold. But this is probably a minor inaccuracy because I think next turn I'm going to be able to attack into West of Net, and then I'm going to be able to go. I'm going to be threatening to go into Helm's Deep. So I might have kept my larger force in West of Net, but oh, they couldn't have because they were just moving from Durin Forest. All right. Okay. So 
they draw Corsairs of Umbar. That's pretty nice for them. I get Dead Men of Dunharrow, which I'm happy to see. Daylight, very good defensive card. So I'm pretty happy here. Would have also been happy to see some Ents. And maybe I'll get a Will of the West. They allocate an eye. They roll one more. And I get my Will of the West. Okay, so that's nice. I think I have to attack out of... Yeah, so I have to attack out of Edoras because I don't want... I don't want um, Aragorn and Boromir to get trapped in, in there and die because the Witch King's army will be able to defeat them. And eventually I want to get Gandalf and Fangorn and then their the leadership will be less effective. So that's probably what's going to happen. Let's see. All right, so they attack. I attack Westamnet. And by the way, I'm saving my character die because I want to potentially move the Fellowship once. Oh, I didn't even... I, I said I played Athelos, but I didn't acknowledge it. I got, I got two... Um, I healed two. I rolled two sixes. So that's that's above average. You'd expect only one healing. Okay. Uh, I attack into Westham Net. I play no quarter. And I get six hits. <laughs> All right. So when you're fighting in Rohan, there are Ent cards. So like you definitely can be worried that crazy things can happen but that's certainly above average <laughs> to do six hits so no quarter just completely takes that out and now and now what's happening is helm's deep is entirely open all right so <laughs> six hits wow all right they get one back against me i completely annihilate them and I get rid of the regular because I want to try and conserve my force pool. Having regulars in there lets me downgrade. And also I have Aragorn and Boromir there, so, you know, that lets me still be rolling five dice. And even if they have something like um, Words of Power, I, I have two Captains of the West there, so I'm okay. All right, let's see what they do. They have to, sure, they have to attack into West. I'm not, they have to kick me out of that. And... They are thinking about playing card. They play a character card. So I'm thinking this is Dread and Despair, probably. Uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. Let's find out. I play a strategy card. Okay, so it's almost certainly Daylight. They, they might have something like Cruel as Death or um, uh, They Are Terrible. So they could be dishing out extra damage. And... And I just want to limit the damage done to this army as much as possible until I get get to Fangorn. Because they're going to press. I'm going to retreat to Fangorn, and then I'll bring Gandalf in. And then that army is much more survivable because they have fewer. They only have one leadership reroll once I get Gandalf in there. And it turns off a lot of their combat cards. All right. They're terrible. Great. All right. Makes sense. So I'm glad to have played Daylight. They get two hits against me. I get one hit back. So I've been a little uh, spiky with my... Hits, they, they press, and I retreat to Fangorn. They bring in a large army, but leave one unit in fold. We have not marked that Edoras is controlled by Shadow, but... Oh, Edoras is not controlled by Shadow. So they haven't they haven't moved into Edoras yet. I want to get Gandalf now, though I also want to muster in Edoras. I want to get Gandalf now. So I get Gandalf in Fangorn. I get my extra die. Everybody's together. They muster an extra elite in... Oh, they think about it. They muster an extra elite in Orthanc because they don't want to risk getting Saruman killed with a single Ent. So this way I'd need two Ents to kill off Saruman. All right. I draw a card. Wizard Staff. All right. He did just show up thematically appropriate they accidentally drew a card for me is what happened so uh instead they draw a character card interesting not sure why they're drawing character cards but it does it it does let you mess with yeah i don't know I, i'm just not sure what to do there a lot of these cards are not hugely useful but maybe you just start whittling down this army in fangorn it is slightly risky if the combat goes very poorly, then I can sort of counterattack into Westamnet and take over Helm's Deep. I might have been tempted also to take over Edoras, 
before somebody gets mustered in there. I'm continuing to pass here. They play Shelob's Lair. I reveal the fact that I have Dead Men of Dunharrow. And I move the Fellowship once because I want to keep them going. And they only get hit on sixes. They draw a strategy card. Shadows on the Misty Mountain is obviously good. And I go ahead and muster a regular in Dale and a regular in Edoras just to harass them a little bit. And then they play Shadows on Misty Mountains. I use Legolas's ability to muster the Elves towards war. Okay, what else did I want to do with that card? I guess I didn't want to... The Palantir, I mean, I didn't want to draw a card. So I just muster. All right. They attack into Edoras from the Witch King. We don't play cards, but they hit, and I don't get any. So, you know, effectively that one unit took away temporarily a hit point from this army in Westamnet. All right. Um, let's see what's going to happen. I draw a Book of Mazar Bowl. So maybe someday uh, Pippin... Oh, right, Gimli. Gimli can put the dwarves to war. I do have to be careful about getting all my nations to war because then they can get the Mouth of Sauron. I'm at five movement. I think I just stay hidden and chill in Rivendell. They allocate one eye, roll no more, but then get a bunch of Palantirs, and I get a bunch of movement. So these are the sorts of situations where if you have big armies mustered already, then you can sort of go and strike. And over the course of a whole game, probably, especially if it's a longer game, probably Shadow is going to have a bad roll at some point. So, all right. I don't know that I'm running a bunch with the Fellowship, but I might try moving some. They move armies. So what just happened? They just moved to Eastamnet and Parth Celebron. They have now completely surrounded Gandalf's army, but it looks like they don't realize that Helm's Deep is open. So, all right, so that's just a mistake. Right, that's just a bad mistake. Because now I'm going to be able to attack into Fords of Eisen and then move into Helm's Deep. And then even if they besiege me, I have Dead Men of Dunharrow to escape. So, yeah, that's just a bad mistake. I will say, to be fair, I have seen worse mistakes. And at some point I will do a video on a worse mistake. But the... The thing that happens when you're playing military as free people and as shadow is that sometimes there are mistakes. Like that's part of the game. So I don't I don't think that there's like sometimes you get bad dice rolls. Nobody's gonna play a perfect game. Like this is totally normal part of the game. I think that's what makes it exciting. So all right. So I go ahead and I'm sure I attack into Fords of Eisen. Right. I attack into Fords of Eisen. And I think they were thinking if I moved to Westamnet, they could attack in Westamnet, and then I wouldn't be able to retreat into Helm's Deep. But this way, I attack in the Fords of Eisen. All right, so I play Mighty Attack to make sure I kill that unit, because if I don't kill that unit, it can retreat into Helm's Deep, and that would be a pain in the neck. So uh, nice to have a Mighty Attack there. They do get a hit against me. And now there's this army 3-1 against this army 3-1. I have more leadership. I have four leadership to their two leadership. Interesting. I might be tempted as Shadow to attack out of Orthanc. It's certainly risky. But free people are not going to get two different strongholds. It would be risky. Free people get to roll five dice, and Shadow only gets to roll four dice because I have Captains of the West. All right, let's see what they do. All right, so they move to take over, uh, to prepare to take back Helm's Deep, and I, or to besiege Helm's Deep. So I move into Helm's Deep, then they besiege Helm's Deep. So this is kind of an ironic turn of events for these armies that were in Edoras, marched to Westamnet, got attacked in Westamnet, retreated to Edoras, attacked back into Westamnet, 
retreated to Fangorn, attacked into Fords, and now are in Helm's Deep. <laughs> and I think now Gandalf and Aragorn are going to say, see you later. Good luck, guys. <laughs> We're going uh, to talk to some dead men. So, you know, this army has five leadership contributed by the Witch King. So it would be really nice for Gandalf to stay and just defend Helm's Deep. But it's risky with only five hit points. They have nine hit points and I only have five. So I think I end up getting out of there. All right. But yeah, so I retreat. I don't want to lose. I don't want to risk losing two action dice on turn six. That would be just way, way too costly. So I get four regulars and Pilar gear. There are no armies at war here. I can start to muster up. If I brought Boromir, then, or if Boromir had stayed in Minas Tirith, then I'd be able to use these character dice to muster. I think he has to be in a stronghold. So he, or maybe just Minas Tirith, I don't remember. But he couldn't muster, he couldn't use his ability in Pilar gear. That's insufficient. All right. So Pits of Mordor get played. All right. What's their force pull situation? All right, they only have three regulars left. I move the fellowship once because we're just going to move once per turn. They they miss me, rolling a five. Maybe I'm going to move twice this turn because they're still only hitting me one third chance because they only have a single die. No, all right. I muster the elves towards war. So they got they did all this messing around with in Helm's Deep, and it potentially allows me to get Lorien mustered up before they get besieged. So they draw a strategy card. I get elves all the way to war, and now they play Monsters Roused. Okay. Next round. They're happy to probably see the Balrog because they're going to besiege Lorien, I think. I get power too great now. Would have been convenient if I had it earlier. All right. They get rid of cruel weather because maybe the fellowship's not going to get revealed, and who knows? So, you know, the fellowship is now at six progress. Granted, Gollum's guide, so they have to be have to be very careful about taking corruption. But the hunt pool is pretty friendly for Gollum if he makes it to Mordor like this. They did put two red tiles in already, so they're they're still they're still respecting the ring game. All right, they get one they roll one eye i get a bunch of musters in two movements so i think this is totally fine with me i'm going to muster up in lorian they besiege lorian i now am starting to muster in dale sure they attack in helm's deep boromir is there he plays brave stand against deadly strife but they get four hits i get five back at least that's whittling that army down a bit and Boromir has a single unit. So, yeah, the thing is the brave stands are much more effective if you have more companions in there. So that deadly strife would not have been so deadly. All right. I move once. Southrons and Easterlings are now to war. I pass. They are now relocating weird why don't they finish off helm's deep first i guess they're just worried about ents that's pretty cautious i think it's probably worth and if i had an ent wouldn't i have played it last round i don't know maybe not or last first combat round all right so they relocate armies to lorian and then i play power to great it's a nice combat effect no quarter but I play it now in the hopes that it's going to waste cards from their hand. It turns out that they have are plenty of army cards, so it's not a big deal. They get rid of it with a little high, which is correct. And then I'm getting, I'm mustering up in Dale. So this is the benefit of the early game where I mustered the North towards war. You can start to do a huge amount of mustering in Dale and then either defend Woodland Realm and Erebor very well or you can just go on the offensive if there's a place that you can attack. So, all right, so they're attacking in Lorien. The Balrog misses. 
They get two hits though, and I get four hits. Legolas is fighting well, and they stop. Okay, I play Smeagol Helps Nice Master. So my plan is, I'm just gonna move slowly. I'm gonna move one a turn. You're not putting enough military pressure on for me to be worried. All right, they're reinforcing a little bit and Lorien is getting reinforced. Helm's Deep is getting reinforced. All right, they allocate an eye and roll three more and I get a nice flexible roll. We'll see, maybe a few more characters than I really want. So I start by mustering another Northern elite. And, and the thinking is I want to get this army ready to go and then start going somewhere. So we'll see where they end up going. This army with Gimli plus this leadership over here, two companions probably can take out any one stronghold. All right, Fighting Urukai comes in to Lorien. I do have Brave Stand, which I can play. They get one hit, I get zero. My, my goal here basically is just, I'm probably gonna lose, I know I'm probably gonna lose Lorien, but I want to at least make this army and Lorien weak. So I'm gonna try and prolong the siege as long as possible. All right, they managed to take out Lorien pretty efficiently and still have seven hit points left. So they did spend quite a few combat cards on it, but all right, I moved the fellowship again, they miss again. And now they're moving armies around. They moved from South Rune to East Rune. They have now gotten armies in position to take out Helm's Deep. And I play through a day and a night right now. So I guess I'm going to Carrick? Dale to Carrick? No. All right. I say, doesn't matter. I'm not going to go after Mount Gundabad. I'm going after Dol Golder right now. They muster an elite into Dol Guldur. I besiege it. And then they attack Helm's Deep. They say, go ahead, waste your army in Dol Guldur. I'm going to keep going with my military game. They get, they take out Helm's Deep. Boromir falls, but at least gets two hits in parting. Good job. All right. They note that they were afraid of the, the Sudden Strike. The Sudden Strike could have possibly gotten enough hits to make the Witch King die, so they just decided to play it a little safer. All right, they have moved Southron and Easterling armies outside of Dale, which is a little sad because maybe I could have just... If I think the ring is doing well enough, I can just I could just wait in Dale. Like, I didn't need to move this army out to attack, but I guess my thinking is their military is slow enough, I can potentially merge up Gandalf and Aragorn with this Minas Tirith army and do something cool. We'll see. All right, so I move Gandalf. I move Gandalf to Fangorn. And I move Aragorn to Eastamnet with the idea that we might all merge up in Dol Guldur. And I guess I had the... Interesting. So I had the last action because they rolled three eyes. And so now I'm threatening to take out Saruman with this end card. Now that I get Gandalf in the right position. Osgiliath, Druid and Forest, Eastamnet, Fangorn. So I'm moving my companions all over. I still have Book of Mazarbul. Gimli, though, is no longer near enough to Erebor to put the dwarves to war. And I'm not even sure that I want to put them all the way to, to war, but okay. I also get Pippin towards Ered Luin. All right, so I think I'm hoping that they roll a bunch of eyes again and I'm going to go on some military attack. We'll see. So I get a second end. So obviously that makes me feel much more confident at taking out Saruman. Very likely that I will be able to get at least two hits. And because Gollum is God, I could even play There's Another Way if I wanted to. All right, so they allocate an eye and roll one more. I get this crazy roll of ridiculous number of characters, which is good if I just want to attack. Um, maybe not as good if I want to muster and build up more. It's That's probably a net good roll. All right, so I start with Ents before they have a chance to muster. I get two hits. And I start with Ents Rage because I think that Nameless would affect is slightly better. So 
answer age. And now I think, I think I'm going to play, no, I don't think I'm going to play theirs another way because it doesn't, I, it would waste the healing. So I think I just, that's all I do. Yep, no other card. Great. They move Nazgul around. They're preparing. So it looks like they might be playing Corsairs of Umbar. If they do, that's fine with me because then that vacates Umbar and I can possibly take over Dol Guldur. I'm probably going to get companions in position. We'll see. All right. I, yeah. So I muster in Woodland Realm. The risky thing about moving this whole army away is that now this army in Vale of Karnan can besiege Woodland Realm pretty effectively. And I don't have, maybe I'm going to use a ring here. Nope. I just move the fellowship and I get missed. I'm at nine movement, have not been revealed yet because I've been going very slowly. It's turn nine. So I think maybe one turn I move twice and otherwise I'm just moving once a turn. So I'm doing it as safely as I can. They have besieged Woodland Realm. They are, <laughs> He's. they say, let's kill two minions this turn because they're thinking that possibly Woodland Realm can defeat the seven hit point army. I mean, it's possible. A lot of things can happen. I do have, um, I don't have confusion. So, okay. And I can't play a card. So they play Deadly Strife. They get three hits. All right. And I get three hits back. Okay. And second round, they play another strategy card. They play Great Host. I play Sudden Strike. This this could be, theoretically, I could possibly avoid the the Great Host, especially if they don't get any hits. All right. my pr this, this Sudden Strike could really matter. All right. Ooh, and I hit. Wow. All right. So if I get two more hits or even one more hit, it makes it less likely. All right. Let's see what happens. They get one hit, one hit against me. So if I manage to get two hits here, the great host does not trigger. What? Yeah, two hits. All right. So they were worried about killing two minions this round. They sort of called it against themselves. That was fairly unlikely but you know there wasn't they didn't even they weren't even guaranteed to get one six on that attack with with well i guess they thought they had four dice yeah okay so elves can fight they are down to one and what's going to happen this is the last round of combat is the witch king going to die they don't play any card because what can they play what do i play i don't think there's anything i can play I just need to roll five. I'm thinking about I'm thinking about playing. There's another way. I think I have to save that. I mean, I want to make a credible ring threat. That's an incredibly good card. <laughs> I say, could you tell me what you're going to roll and what I'm going to roll? Yeah. All right. So I play heroic death here. That is shocking. So I guess I just want to make sure that they don't take Woodland Realm like this because if they don't, I can definitely mess with it. They roll a four and then a six. Wow, they got their hit. So that heroic death is going to keep Woodland Realm alive. Let's see if I get mine and I get mine. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Two minions killed in one round. That actually happened. I've totally forgotten this game. I didn't know that that happened. Wow. Wow. Witch King. Dead. Holy cow. Heroic death. There is another way. Played to save Woodland Realm. Oh my gosh. I can't believe that. I say unlikely outcome. Wow. Okay. And I say I didn't need my card, which is because even if this regular had died, they would not have captured Woodland Realm. It would just be completely empty. So, and then presumably I could muster up uh, some elves there. Okay, I moved the Fellowship a second time because getting to Mortar now is good. I don't want to be revealed. It is unlikely that I will be revealed. First, I have to get hit which is about 50-50. And then there has to be an eye. That's the only way to reveal me. I do get hit. Okay, that's fair. But not revealed. 
All right, so that's that's two corruption. I'm entering Mordor with two corruption, a fairly friendly pool because it's large and I can go slowly and I can use Gollum's ability to save corruption. And I still have Bilbo Song. I did just play There's Another Way, which is an important healing, but all right. So turn nine, making it to Mordor, going very slowly and military has been a mess for Shadow and they just lost two minions. All right. I move companions to Dol Golder because now I am ready to try and capture that stronghold. I don't know that it's worth it for me to try and um, take this. Is it really worth the effort? But maybe it is. It certainly makes it dangerous for Shadow if I have a two victory points there. Um, the other thing that I noticed by moving characters there is I'm now getting these hobbits into position and then I can play Pokemon of Mazarbal and put the dwarves to war. Now that I've made it to Mordor, they're going to get the Mouth of Sauron. So, okay. They play Shadows Gather to move an army straight from minus Morgul to Minas Tirith, which is interesting because if you see me going for a military attack, like why are you leaving minus Morgul undefended a little surprising there i'm gonna take an attack at dole Golder. i'm gonna see what happens i don't play any cards i'm just trying to roll some sixes i don't roll any sixes gandalf does not shine because they don't have any nazgul there they get one hit against me all right not the best <laughs> and then we joke there are no elves in that army uh because all of the combats with elves have been pretty bad for shadow all right, so they only have seven dice to my six. They have to allocate an I and... Oh, oh, they lost their they lost their action. So they wanted to attack Minas Tirith, so we say, sure. And now um, Gondor has progressed one toward war. And I draw Thrandall's Archers, file of Galadriel, certainly a nice card. And they allocated one I and rolled no more. And I got a very nice roll, including that three wills of the West. Nerve-wracking if they have Day Without Dawn. So I'm definitely going to spend one right away, and I'm going to move. So, okay. Starting with a negative one is a nice start. There are many tiles that are fine for me. I have plenty of movement. I can hide. If I get any of these non-eye tiles, and even the red tiles, I can use Gollum's ability because I'm not revealed. So these red tiles, though they are red tiles, they do not reveal me because they don't have a reveal icon on them. And therefore I can use Gollum's ability to reduce the corruption. So, um, you know, obviously starting with a blue tile is good. They don't have Day Without Dawn and they played Denethor's Folly. Okay, they're trying to continue to make military progress. They're not that far away and they're saving Corsairs of Umbar for, for the end. It's a little surprising because if they win this... Oh, they just played Denethor's Folly. Okay. I play Guards of the Citadel, so that's pretty nice. And they move armies. I don't know what this army from Helm's Deep to Westamnet is doing. And also from Mount Gundabad to Mount Graham. I don't, I don't really get that. I guess they're, yeah, I guess we'll see. All right, I play Vile Galadriel. And then they move armies. Okay, so they're bringing this, this army from Helm's Deep to Minas Tirith to help shore up that attack. I muster an elite in Rivendell because I see this army coming from Mount Graham to Etten Moors to Trollshaws. And I just want to go slow with the Fellowship. That's my plan. Moving once. If I take two damage from an eye, that's probably fine. But it's a zero. So very pleasant climb so far. They are piling onto Minas Tirith. And 
what did I do? I, m what the heck did I do? I mustered Gondor towards war. So basically, I just didn't want to give them forever to get their things into position. And now these units from Osgiliath can go into Minas Morgul. A little weird. All right. They have gotten into position outside of Rivendell. All okay. I'm happy to see Wisdom of Elrond for confusion, and Grey Company is useful to refill my hand, assuming I have enough Northern Elite units. I do have one. You can technically play that if there are no Elite units, and then you do not eliminate your regular. You just use a character die to draw two strategy cards, which isn't so bad if you're going military. All right, they allocate one eye, roll th two more, and I get a very flexible roll again. I start by mustering into... Dol Amroth. Right, that's why I got Gondor to war. And now they play Corsairs. And then I muster an Elven Elite in Rivendell. I guess I'm just like, I am going to be really well defended there. It seems like overkill to me. They attack in Dol Amroth. I play Confusion because I just want to whittle them down. They get two hits and press. They get one. And uh, we joke that they don't fight because they don't have elves and they have now taken out five hit points in Dol Amroth having lost four hit points themselves. So that's a pretty good trade. And they are at eight victory points now. So, all right, let's see what happens. I'm going to move the fellowship. I get a one. This is very pleasant for me. I take one corruption. They play shadow is moving. They're trying to get into position. It looks to me like unless they take Minas Tirith, they're not going to be able to win. I do have power of Tom Bombadil, so they need an extra action to get rid of the cards of the Shire. I play Gwahir the Wind Lord into Minas Tirith. Wow, these guys have been all over. Gandalf and Aragorn, you have been all over. And we even get Gimli into Minas Tirith. Wow. All right, so they attack into Pilar gear. And then I move the Fellowship again. And my thinking is, if I take an eye now, it's not great, obviously, but I want to make sure that I have enough movement next turn to destroy the ring and these stop tiles can definitely hit me. So a little risky, but at least an eye makes me progress. So, okay, so an eye, I don't like four, but it's okay. So I'm definitely planning on holding Minas Tirith. I have a lot of good cards now. They allocate one eye and roll only one more. And I, here, again, did not get very much movement. And this, by the way, is why something like There Is Another Way is so useful, because then this Palantir becomes a movement. And that's why the other sort of attack cards that Shadow can use are useful. All right, I hide. They still don't have Day Without Dawn. They play Isildur's Bane, hoping to get me high on corruption, or maybe Shelob so that I can then be at risk of moving. Though, they're, even if they draw three, the I only does two. So, all right, they draw the negative two, and I just move. And it's the three stop. Okay, so this is interesting. Now we're at a situation where if I... If I don't reveal here and I try moving again, the, the corruption will be high enough for me to be killed by an eye. So I think I'm just going to try and hold. I take three. Okay. They move armies around. I play Book of Miserable because I'm now getting the dwarves all the way to war. 
They're moving on Gray Havens. I sure mustered a lot in. Wow, so I mustered all my elites, all my remaining elites in Rivendell. Did I really need that? Was three not enough against these six hit points? I feel like it probably was. All right, so I move my Hobbit companion into Gray Havens and I retake Dale. And now they attack Gray Havens. They're gonna have to try and hold it. I play the Gray Company to draw a bunch of cards and power up and, and defend uh, Minas Tirith that much better. I get Valor, I guess could be useful. Scouts obviously was not useful. They use the Mouth of Sauron to attack Gray Havens. They say, wait, wait, they're thinking. Okay, they choose a different card. And let's see what I play. Maybe Valor, or maybe, I guess, Celeborns, we'll see. All right, I play Valor first. They get one hit against me. I get no hits. And then they stop because they have one more attack. And now I'm just risking the move. Interesting. I'm risking the move because I think that there's a decent chance they're going to take Grey Havens. So I spend a ring and I move the fellowship and four tiles kill me and six tiles are fine. So in the end, very close game but I get it too. All right, let's look at the statistics. That was, wow, what a game. I think Shadow was really, showed a lot of resiliency after losing, after losing two companions. To be able to continue like that is really impressive. All right, so I assume these are correct, that Shadow rolled more. Plus three on sixes, nice. A little high on eyes, low on musters, but overall, relatively balanced game. I did roll a lot of character dice, which can be useful here and there, or may tempt you to move your entire army out of Dale when it was just fine sitting there. Anyway, that was the game. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good rest of the day.